On today's podcast, we're joined by Hazy Kim, the Managing Director of Leading Music Publisher, Creation Music, a division of SM Entertainment, one of South Korea's largest entertainment companies. We discuss how creation has differentiated itself in the competitive music publishing landscape, the unique value it brings to the table, the criteria and approach they have in selecting and signing songwriters, as well as getting into artist management and much, much more. You don't want to miss it. Insiders, are you ready? Welcome to Mubu TV's Music Business Insider Podcast, where our mission is to educate, empower, and engage artists and music business professionals who are dedicated to having a successful career in the new music industry. Here are your hosts, Rich Ezra and Eric Knight. Welcome back, Insiders, to another episode of the Mubu TV Music Business Insider Podcast, where our mission is to educate, empower, and engage your music career. On today's podcast, we welcome Hazy Kim, Managing Director of Creation Music Rights, one of South Korea's leading music companies. We discuss their international expansion into Europe and the U.S., finding and signing top global songwriters, and the company's broader goals of their multi-label strategy. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back, Insiders. Today's featured guest is Hazy Kim, Managing Director of Creation Music Rights, which is one of South Korea's leading music publishing companies. This was a very interesting conversation because yeah. SM Entertainment, which is one of the largest, those are the the company behind BTS. It's right. one of the largest entertainment companies in the world, certainly one of the leading and major companies in Korea, South Korea's uh, entertainment space. They are enormous. And she is the managing director of all of their publishing operations, especially here in, in Europe and in the US. And they're coming into a territory that's very, very well populated. Now, they have had as, you know, Jinbai, is part right. of the Creation Music Group. Now, this was an interesting conversation for a couple of reasons. Number one, them coming into the territory and what they can offer as a publisher. But more important, it's the broad nature of the company that I thought was most interesting. I mean, for example, you know, how they're going to differentiate themselves and what value they bring to the music publishing space was interesting, being that they're part of SM Entertainment Network, which is, as I said, one of the largest entertainment companies in the world. And the idea that you know they have production teams right. many production teams record labels music publishing everything is in-house basically and artist management right you know which is very very common in a lot of other territories where you have all that in one whereas in um and and we're starting to see that in america more integrated yeah which which, which integrated. wasn't like that before if you remember 10 20 years ago i mean that was like you know blasphemy if you had a, a, a management company and it's interesting because when i worked at universal you and i have talked about that yeah i worked for that division of that management company that they wanted to integrate with bringing the artists into those 360 deals, but even on a management scale. And this is, you know, we're talking 2008, 2009, that that was already starting to happen. So it's interesting how this has become more commonplace, even with companies here in America now. Yes, exactly. And the thing is, is that in Korea, you do see a lot more of that integration. Right. Where it's literally all in one. The production, the management, the label, which makes sense, you know, why go to have 30 different companies? I mean, there's, well, a, there's a pro and con to that. And, a con to, and that's right. what makes it interesting is that, you know, the shifting nature of that, you know, some people don't see it as, as good. Some people do. Some people right. think it's, you know, it's all that integration is great. But then again, you know, whose interests are being represented? That's, that's always the fear when you right. have one person doing it all as opposed to a manager fighting for you at a label or a right. publishing company. That's the, the challenge. Yeah, and I thought one of the other points was her criteria and approach on what they sign uh, was very interesting as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, what do they look for in songwriters? Right. What do they look for, you know, creatively as well as, you know, track record within the marketplace? And you have to look for different things when you're going into different territories. Right, exactly. Again, it gets back to that sensibilities thing, that theme that we've been talking about with people like Rampersand on a creation side with providing music for different territories. I, I think that goes the same here too. The, the sensibilities of what you're doing and what kind of songwriters, like you said, that you're getting and how are you going to integrate them with the artists that you're trying to connect them to? Yeah, it, it was 
was also very interesting to hear her insight, you know, the various production teams that I mentioned that they have and how they work creatively on various projects. They've bought up and integrated at least three of these production companies that have producers, songwriters who write and create music right. for a lot of artists out there. That's how, um, you know, Jinbai, he, he was with one exactly. of those companies. And, you know, these companies, enormous success with a lot of artists. So this is this is a uh, this is like a what, what would you call it? Not a machine, but it's a very very well integrated well, it's kind a, of system. Correct. Yes, it's all yeah. symbiotic. Uh, very symbiotic yeah. to use your your, your term. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, it was also really interesting on how they're getting uh, into so many different areas of the business, which we were talking about yeah. before, and now they're getting into management, label, and kind of having that really three hundred and sixty uh, approach to what they're providing. Yeah, very very much so. And again, I think that that's something. That that they are bringing, uh, I guess, the business. It, it's much more common. That that approach is much more common in Japan and in Korea than it is in America. Right. And so to see that integration here. And what's interesting about it is when I compare it to American companies, I'm seeing a lot more American companies, managers, labels. BMG was a part of that whole thing right. of, you know, merging uh, music and publishing together, right. you know, where there's not really that difference because the economics, you don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars to make a record anymore. Exactly. At one time in, in, in the music business, not that long ago, as you remember, you did, right. you did, you needed to spend six figures on, on making a record. So it's a whole different kind of business now. So I guess, as you say, you need an entirely different approach. With that, insiders, sit back, relax, and enjoy our featured conversation with Hazy Kim. Hazy, welcome. Hello, thanks for having me here today. Thanks so much for doing this. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. So excited to be here. We're excited to have you because, you know, Creation Music Rights is a very interesting company. Uh, you guys, your, your, your expansion that, that we've heard about is mm. quite extensive, both in Korea and in Europe, and now coming to the United States. So my question to you as a company is, you know, how does Creation Music Rights plan to differentiate itself in the competitive music publishing industry? And talk about some of the unique value that it brings to the table. So Creation Music Rights, um, Currently, we are very focused in the K-pop industry just because where we are coming from in terms of our landscape and our expertise. We are SM Entertainment's 100% publishing division of the company. So, of course, our um, background and core lies in K-pop. Um, I think right now in the global scene where K-pop is becoming one of the very popular genres everywhere in the world, it's really important to cater to that kind of audience and who is participating in that genre. So we are a K-pop specialized publisher, which I don't think it's just so far. Um, there's a lot of writers and producers focusing in the K-pop market, but there isn't really an entity in the entertainment industry or the label side, publishing side especially, that can really handle what is needed for K-pop producers and artists. And as a company, we really want to cater to those kind of talent. But also what really stands out for us is that we are not exclusively for K-pop either. So a lot of our writers and producers are global. They are based in UK, Amsterdam, Europe, um, Scandinavia. So we really want to focus our um, team and our team's efforts into really servicing those global talents around the world. So we not only pitch to K-pop focused labels such as SM, our parent company, Hive, JYP, NYG, but also we have connections globally with our A&R network. So all the major markets in the US and Europe, we are always focusing our energy into those global markets as well. So we are a K-pop um, specialized entity with that background and expertise, but also we have the scale and the capacity to serve the global music market. Wonderful. Okay, great. Speaking of global talent and creatives, uh, with a focus on recruiting top global songwriters, could you elaborate on the criteria and approach that KMR employs in selecting and signing these songwriters, both within and outside SM Entertainment's network? Yeah, of course. Um, we have a pretty big A&R team that always is open to new ideas. 
Um, the K-pop market is always changing, and it has evolved ex- extensively in the past few years. So, if you look at the progression of the songs, like a few years ago, maybe it could be a little bit um, dance focused. There's always like a set kind of a pattern that goes in the song. But right now, it's very diverse. It could be like a K ballad, which is more on the soft, like romantic side of the music. There's OSTs that. Are featured in a lot of K dramas. There's of course the very、um, high energy dance music for the girl groups and the boy bands. So it's not like one genre that we focus on. Like K-pop is a huge variety of music that exists in one umbrella called K-pop. So when we look at、um, artist signings, we do focus on who is able to be flexible in the room and just. Have many ideas that can cater to different parts of the K-pop industry.、Um, also, K-pop production I think is a little bit different than the general music sessions and production scene.、Um, it is a very intensive structure, and we always joke about saying that oh, we're like a K-pop factory when we have <laughs> song sessions and song camps. It is a lot of energy that we need. Everybody has to put their best foot forward. So we like to. Th- Put a lot of combinations in terms of which producers can work with which songwriters, what kind of top liners would fit for the track. But it's also important for the participants in the room to be really creative. Sometimes go out of their comfort zone, be outside of the box, so that you could really have all those creative energies come together.、Um, so we do look for somebody. It doesn't have to be that you always. Been in K-pop, you could just be a great writer and producer. And good music is good music. I'd like to emphasize that you don't have to have expertise in K-pop to write a good K-pop song because K-pop is just pop by Korean artists. So,、right. any good writers willing to try something new、um, could be flexible in these camps and have that real passion for music. I think is what we're looking for. Okay.、Um- The establishment of a European subsidiary and plans to enter the North American market, they signal sort of an amb- I would say an ambitious international expansion. Talk about what specific strategies does KMR have in place to navigate and succeed in these diverse and competitive markets? I know Robin, you know, runs your European division, and that's it's quite a an ambitious kind of job, I would think. Right.、Um- The reason why we started our second、um, office in Europe is because SM already has a lot of footing in that area. There's a lot of Nordic and Scandinavian producers and writers that's been producing and writing for K-pop artists for many, many years. So we already have a footprint and a good network out there. And having Robin, who is A true industry veteran with 30 plus years of experience in both, not just K-pop, but he's Plays so many Billboard records with his team of artists. He has、right. amazing connections. He's been heading Song Expo in the region for many, many years too. So having him as our European head really puts him at the core of the business. It's able to connect with so many networks of writers and artists and A and Rs and also label heads around that region. And because of the re- good reputation that he's been having with the cut rates, how ethical and so passionate his writers are, it. Gives us a good footing in that area. For the U.S. business,、um, the plan is to launch a U.S. office in 2024.、Um, so I am heading that operations currently. We are having so many meetings with our business potential business partners, which could be labels, management,、um, of course, publishers and smaller indie artists and our consultants. Everyone. The goal for the U.S. business is not just to Bring U.S. writers into the K-pop scene, but also to put some of our K-pop writers in the U.S. market as well. There's so many featureings going on with、um, U.S. artists and some of the solo K-pop writers. There's so many collaborations, remixes. There's opportunities out here, and just creating new kind of combinations of artists is very exciting for us. So having our writers have a footage and an expansion. In the U.S. is equally as important as having some of the U.S. writers come to K- Korea for K-pops.、Um, 
So that's kind of our plan. Um, we want it to be like a synergy created in two different markets, but going forward with the same goal of creating new music and good music and something that would commu um, cater to a wider variety of audience. I would think coming with coming into the U.S. market the way that you are with your track record and you know around the world and the number of hits that your producers and songwriters have had that the entree into the American A&R community, which is going to be the people that will be utilizing your producers, your writers, need your songs, would be quite extensive. Yeah, so I've been very, very pleased with all the communications that we've been having with our potential partners. Just a few years ago, I my background before coming to KMR, I was at a major music company in their publishing division, and this is still the time where K-pop was considered a sub-genre, a niche genre, a smaller than major pop genre. Um, but right now, as I'm meeting these partners and A&R and label heads, they're so excited to partner with an opportunity as such. Um, part of the reason being it's just an exciting, like fun, uplifting song genre. So writers are willing to participate in that. But if you look at it from the publisher's perspective, they make really good money. And writers who have participated in some of the K-pop um, songs will realize that having one stream or even trying to get to like how many million streams in Spotify, that boils down to not that much royalty payment versus having one cut in a K-pop album, even if it is not the single or the title song, just having that presence gives you access to millions of physical copy. Korea um, physical sales is ever growing. It is already one of the highest in the world, but every year there is an increase of global sales or of physical album, which is unique to this market. And as K-pop travels more in Southeast Asia, East Asia in general, there are constantly more fans that are buying these albums. So for a songwriter, having a cut in one of those albums gives you so much more access and gives you so much more career as, a song, as an artist. So I think there is a growing interest just because um, both the genre is exciting and also as a writer, um, working full time, it's a really good opportunity to monetize your talent. Absolutely. When, when when you say physical, is it vinyl and compact disc still? That that's yeah. So mainly it's CDs in Korea. One great thing about um, CD market in Korea is fans engage in the buying of CDs differently than the rest right. of the world. If you look at one of these CD albums, it's a real product of art. It's not just one CD included in a package. It's a whole book about who this artist is, like some of their pictures, some of their projects. There's special cards that people could collect, so there's a collective value of it. Um, it's really exciting. I've seen a few myself, but all the CDs are very different, very unique. They have their artist's value. Um, some of them gives you, if you collect a few, then like you get special access to the VIP events and stuff like that. So there's always this like, um, there's more than just buying the CD. And that's what really keeps the fans engaged and it makes them feel like they are part of the artist community. So that's why CDs sell really, really well. And I've talked in a few other panels about this, but super fans in K-pop are so much more willing to spend for the artists that they love. They're 75% more um, likely to spend than our average listener. So if you really garner that audience and then provide what they are looking for, which is just more connection to the artist, whether it's through merch, CD, vinyls, any kind of like artist promotional materials, it gives them joy and it also gives artists a better platform to showcase themselves. Yeah, that's exactly what Jin was telling us earlier. And it's yeah. interesting, you were talking about the thing with the cuts. It sounds like it's almost the old model where if you had a cut on an album, and it was a huge hit, it was still beneficial to you. Oh, yeah. So it's you almost got the royalty. Right. Yeah. So it's interesting how that model is applying here where that model doesn't exist really here anymore. Because right. there's no model to exactly. give that economic it, it, exactly. factor. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. all streaming. Yeah. A lot of the K pop artists, they also have the singles and the title songs and uh -huh. everything, but essentially the album has 
the entire story right. of the artist. Right. And I think in the K-pop scene, um, a lot of the artists still maintain that integrity of having a full album as an artist. So yeah. as K-pop fans, um, fan myself, it's really exciting to see the whole progression of the songs, how that was entire album was curated for a specific purpose and a theme. Okay. Um, Hazy, could you provide insights into your specific production teams, such as Monotree, The Hub, Smash It within KMR, and how they contribute to the overall synergy and success of the company? Um, I will be talking a little bit about the business perspective here and the reason why we have maintained that structure. Um, so just as a quick background, when KMR launched in Korea, we've created these massive partnerships and some acquisition deals with some of these um, independent publishers and production teams, some of which you've already named, Monetary, Smash Hit, The Hub, and many more that we will have in the future. Um, so when we looked at the Korean business, of course, we have direct relationships with SM Entertainment as our parent company, but that is just one piece of the puzzle. The K-pop market is huge. There's four um, majors in the market, but there's also independent. There are smaller labels. So if we really want to be the focus and the gateway to K-pop in publishing, you have to have a wide network. And by partner up, partnering up with these companies that already has the strong footage in the market, um, we basically expanded our network immediately and massively. So we have major connections to all the major labels. We have international relationships with other labels outside of Korea, and it just gives us access to all of these ANR networks, label networks, etc. So we put them together all under the KMR umbrella. So we are all now a KMR family, but we are able to maintain their uniqueness in the system. So we have a thing called company and company. So the hub is a KMR company, Monetary is a KMR company, and they still maintain some of their unique structure, whether it's their a &R structuring team, whether it's their um, mentoring system that they have within their producers and songwriters. So we give them the flexibility and the structure to maintain that business model going forward. At the same time, they could also benefit from the scale that we have as a KMR company as a whole. So they are able to utilize our um, a and R system, our admin system and royalty system to better serve their individual producers. So I think with this um, structure, it was it allowed both the CIC companies to grow faster and tap into the areas that they have not before as an independent publisher in the market, but also for KMR as a whole to just have a very wide network of amazing songwriters from the get-go. That's kind of what we are aiming for for the U.S. market. So. Um, at the moment, we are partnering, trying to partner up with a lot of independent publishers. We're having conversations about having a potential JV, artist project investment. So there's a lot of it, exciting plans going forward. Yeah, exactly. And, and speaking of exciting plans, you, you, your company, I believe, uh, KMR, recently signed Kim Woo Jin as KMR's first artist. And I'm, I'm just curious, what was the thinking behind signing her? And how does it align with the overall vision and strategy in music publishing? Or is it a separate thing in terms of being a label? So within KMR, we're not strictly just a publisher. We also have a management division, which mm -hmm. is where Kim Woo Jin is signed to. Right. Kim Woo Jin, um, former member of the boy band Stray Kids, is a massive solo artist as himself. So by managing his ass, he actually has a debut um, album coming out in April with KMR. So that's really exciting. Um, by having an artist within the KMR structure, we're all, it's two ways. Um, for the artists, they get uh, massive support from the KMR team. A lot of the great producers and writers within KMR can work on the project. And right. on the flip side, it gives our artists, um, our writers, an opportunity to work on an exciting solo artist project. So we kind of have hand in hand and it works really well with the, the overall structure. Having the management management team being able to talk to our a &Rs, our producers directly, um, telling them about the vision of the next album, next project. It's a really well communicated system that we could 
really focus on what the artist's vision is for the next project. Um, Kimujin is first of the many that we will have. We have plans to sign two more artists um, in 2024, and the management team is also quickly expanding. So in the future, we'll definitely have a lot of artists within our umbrella. Okay, great. You touched on this earlier. Can you elaborate uh, on KMR's plan to de- to debut two or more new artist teams this year and how these fit into the broader goals of KMR and SM Entertainment's multi-label strategy? So with SM Entertainment's multi-label strategy, I think it's a great way to really focus the a and efforts into specific projects that has all the expertise in what the artist is supposed to, um, what the artist wants to communicate to its fans. So within KMR, our management division looks at some of the artists in the K-pop scene, think about which artists could really reflect what KMR is planning to do as a company, but also develop their artist career so we could focus our energy into breaking them in different markets where they have the most fan base. Um, the two artists that are going to be coming in this year i cannot mention it yet because it's not public information yet but we are in the plans and part of the way that we find these new talents or decide on who we would want to partner up with um, we have a lot of deals going on with um universities in korea that are always nurturing new talent Um, we partner up with SMU, SM Universe, which is kind of like SM's auditiony um, talent nurturing um, part of the business. So we have these partnerships that allow us to really see the talent at its early stage and see the progression of their growth. And as we see fit, um, we could best work with these up and coming writers. So I think that's a really good program that we have and a vision that we have for the company. Um, Yes, we want to have big names and big hits everywhere, but it's also really important to nurture the young up and coming talent within the company and as an industry as a whole. So there's always efforts to bring in new artists, bring in new talent. And the ones that we have already established within our system can also pull them to become better versions of themselves. Okay. You, you, I believe KMR also has plans to expand into Asia more extensively. Yes. And can you talk about, I mean, because you... you, you're, you're based in Korea, the, the company's headquarters are based in Korea. What challenges does that present for you right now as a already established Korean company expanding into Asia? Are, are there any or is it not even material? Um, I think it's more than an opportunity than a challenge because K-pop definitely influences other parts of Asia. So K-pop, I think, sets a trend and... Um, like an example for the rest of the Asian market. Um, there's a lot of developing acts in iPop or J-pop or Mandopop, Cantopop, all of these regions. But K-pop has been the real first phenomenon of where it traveled worldwide and globally. So yeah. it could set a good example of how a regional music at first could expand with such power and travel power to become an eventually global music genre. Um, So because of that, I think it it has been great partnering up with other music from different territories. Um, We're currently in talks with um, companies in China so that we could have some featurings with the Chinese act and a Korean act within ourselves. And then we will be exclusively producing some of these acts. We're talking to businesses in Taiwan to have similar kind of productions. And also in Southeast Asia, there's multiple rising acts in India, Vietnam, Vietnam, Thailand, all of these countries where K-pop has a strong fan base, but also the local acts are really important in connecting the dots. So I think in the next um, few months, we'll have really exciting projects that could put artists from different cultural backgrounds together and create something really meaningful. So Hazy, I I wanted to ask you, because this is something like 14 or 15 years ago didn't exist in the industry where there was labels and management kind of integrating with each other and you know you touched on this earlier about the management company we understand that in addition to forming the multi-record labels that you're get you're you're going to be getting into the artist management business and what was the thinking behind the strategy because i see this happening more and more with companies like the hello group and others and i'm just curious what your strategy is behind that um well in the music industry i think these 
verticals are all very interconnected, and there is just more benefits into these different verticals working together. Um, you've mentioned Hello Group, which has multiple. It's a they have their management division, they have publishing, they have master, they have studios, and also consumer products, which I think is so amazing.、Um, But because they have this all under one umbrella, they're able to communicate better within the company, and that's not only good for the artists themselves, but also the staff and the people that work together. You know, you better know their vision and the goals so that you could work together, and that's kind of what we wanted to adapt in. Also, SM's new strategy going forward, but also、um, speaking. For KMR, definitely what we want to establish,、um, we want we want to focus more going forward. So having a management team that works so closely and horizontally with the publishing company and the producers and writers to it, it just gives a way for a better communication system,、um, more fluidity of ideas.、Um, if there is a certain vision that we could share with them, it's easier. If we have a specific project that exclusively comes through, I would say a different vertical of KMR, but could be transitioned into certain parts. If it's a better project for the artist or the writer, then we could make that happen within the KMR umbrella. And this has also been happening with SM as a as well.、Um, With our relationship, sometimes KMR will have exclusive projects with SM artists because we、um, have more visibility into what they are promoting this year.、Um, SM will have certain projects that would be specific for KMR writers and producers. There's always a、um, two-way communication that is so easy if you have these verticals within the same umbrella. Um, so I think that was a strategy for having management division within KMR,、um, and it's a very fast-growing team.、Um, right now, we are focusing on energy and developing Wu Jin Kim, and then the two other writers that we'll have under the umbrella. But it gives us more opportunity for everybody,、yeah. and I think it's really important to have that kind of structure、um, in a company like KMR, who started、um, out small but is making a big impact very quickly. Very much so. Let me ask you, Hazy, for writers, co- committed writers who are serious about having songwriting or record production as their career, who are serious about it, what advice do you have as somebody who's leading a, a, a major publishing company and works with writers and producers? What advice do you have for those people who are pursuing that as a career today?、Um. I think believing in your talent would be really important in these days, where there's so many influx of music every day. There's a lot of talent, but really believing in what you bring to the table makes a difference in these rooms. Like everybody has their forte, like everyone has their strongest suit, and what you really bring in these sessions and camps is what differentiates you from. A lot of the other producers and writers in the community. So I would say that just if you are passionate about a certain thing in your music, keep that and then nurture that, bring that to the table, and then make that idea shine when you are in a room for a group. But also at the same time, be flexible. So if you are in a room with different people with different personality, different taste, maybe a different vision, you are able to be flexible and work with them. And then that's how I think we create. Something that's really meaningful, and then communicates to a bigger audience. So,、um, I think just bring what you can to the table, but also don't feel afraid to accept new ideas when you're in the room. Hazy, we want to thank you so much for coming and doing yeah, this. We、you. really, really appreciate it.、Thank、It's、you. been very insightful、yeah. and very interesting. I think for our listeners to understand. Your vision, what you're doing at KMR, and what KMR is doing in terms of the expansion. So, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. This was so enjoyable. So, thanks for having me here. Thank you. Really interesting conversation,、yeah. Eric. Really interesting. I, I I enjoyed that one a lot. Hazy brought up a lot of very interesting points, and one of the things that I thought was was most interesting in our conversation with her is you know how she spoke about you know the ambitious plans that the company has to open an American sub、uh, subsidiary, I guess you'd call it, you know, an American operation, which I think at this point. You know, in 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 the industry of today, it's going to be challenging, especially for what they do,、uh, for for a couple reasons. That market, 
is, you know, the market of publishing, of management, of labels right. is fairly competitive, right. the, the American market. It's not like there's only a few doing it. Now, a lot of this depends on scale, but the scale that they're bringing, you know, if they're going to be integrating publishing, you know, with KMR, with labels and management together, there's probably something that can be said for that in terms right. of building careers. But doing it in America... Right. You know, and depending on the kind of talent. Yeah, I, I'm wondering, is their focus going to be strictly K-pop artists in that I, I here? I don't think it could be, although I don't know. Right, because really that, that. that might be the area where they have a niche in, but uh, how much K-pop could you possibly have that would support that infrastructure? It's a very popular genre here in the States, obviously, as we know. Yeah. But can that carry on into an operation like this, which you're saying is very ambitious, which I agree. One of the other points was how their various production teams work. I think at the top of the show, you were talking about how they purchased, I think, two or three of the operations. Three. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Three of those companies and how they work in terms of, you know, each one of them has a team of producers and songwriters and in order to make that work, you need artists right. for those people to work with. You need budgets, you need labels, you need artists to come up with that. It's almost like a whole infrastructure, if right. you will, yeah. you know, in order to make that work. So the other thing that I thought was interesting is, you know, again, we, we mentioned this before, how they are taking on, you know, one of their clients is uh, uh, Kim Woo Jin, uh, and that's going to become the first artist that right. they're going to be taking on, you know, beyond just uh, as a management client or a publishing client, but that it's also going to be an artist that they're going to sign to a record label. So again, we get back to that point that we were talking about at the uh, at, at the beginning, which is how they're really a fully integrated entertainment company. And I'm wondering if that's going to be like maybe an element of the future. Right. But it's, it sounds like a lot like what Taylor jo uh, Jones is doing with his company, with Hello Music Group. You know, it's kind of like integrating that full 360 degree breadth of things where they're plugging in the artist into each of their areas. You know, they've got movies and, and shows that they're developing so they can build, you know, trying to get it. It's, I guess, kind of like too, like Disney, where they're getting some of their artists that they're developing and integrating them into their various verticals. Yeah, very, very much so. That, that, that's a great analogy is the Disney, the Disney analogy, because they have so many areas. And, you know, what, what, what you're talking about is essentially synergy. Right. And a lot of times Disney happens to be the best at it. Disney happens to be the absolute best at that particular aspect that you're speaking of. Much stronger than Sony, right. much stronger than than other uh, divisions of, of uh, you know, corporations that do Well, that. it benefits their ecosystem. It's kind of like Apple and the operating system that they've created. Correct. You know, they, they have a closed off system, but it, it, it integrates very well with all of their products. Same thing with Disney. They have their artists that they sign, but yet they have the parks, they have the uh, records, they have the TV shows, they have the radio network. I mean, they, they're so fully integrated in so, into so many verticals that it makes sense. And I think that's probably the goal of what, what Hazy's company is trying to do. Very, very much so. So it'll be interesting to see and to follow over the next couple you know, months or, or, or years to see how well that whole aspect of KMR integrates into the marketplace. Hey, insiders. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. We really appreciate it. To get show notes, links, and everything that was mentioned during this interview, head on over to our official website at mubutv.com forward slash podcast forward slash show notes. If you're enjoying the content and what we're doing here on the show, please subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts from. And don't forget to rate and review our show at iTunes. Five-star reviews are always welcome and help to ensure that our podcast stands out on the top-rated and new and noteworthy charts on iTunes and our space. You can also find us at social media at Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter X, all ending with the handle Mubu TV, which is spelled M-U-B-U-T-V. Don't forget to catch our flagship show, the Mubu TV Music Business Insider Video Series, airing every week on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Mubu TV. This show was produced and created by Rich Ezra and Eric Knight. Theme music by Disciples of Babylon, and be sure to tune in next week for another episode of the Mubu TV Music Business Insider Podcast.